Well, now that I am so deep in the rabbit hole, how can I possibly assemble all those beautifully painted parts with rusty fasteners like this? So I employed backyard electroplating techniques to make them look like this. In fact, I've already plated a whole pile of fasteners and parts. Let me show you how I did this. Welcome to my backyard electroplating setup. I've put it together with some parts and materials you can easily find. Let's have a closer look. I have three plastic containers here. Each one can hold about five liters, roughly one gallon. The first one contains pool acid, also called hydrochloric acid. Now muriatic acid is very similar, that will work as well. Here in the second one I've got rainwater. Now if you don't have access to rainwater, rather use distilled water. Tap water with chlorine and all of that in it, it's not going to work so well. And in the last one, is my plating solution. I'm going to show you how to make that. My plating solution recipe is three parts common household white vinegar, one part distilled water, and a handful of common household salt. Um, it's not critical. The idea of the salt is simply to increase the conductivity of the solution. If you want a figure, I would say around 150 grams of salt to around 5 liters of the liquids. We are doing zinc plating, so you will also need pure zinc anodes. I found these on Amazon, they are available there. They claim it's 99% pure. And I think that the zinc anodes that they use in the yachting industry can probably also work. You need a direct current power supply. I'm using an old phone charger. This one's got an output of uh, direct current 5 volt, 2 amps. Um, yeah, I think most all of them will work as long as the current output is in the region of at least 1 amp. The voltage is not important. If you have a regulated power supply, more power to you. <laughs> I don't have one. And this has been working for me. Some pieces of electrical wire, some bare copper wire. I got these by stripping back the insulation on a piece like this. A piece of copper tubing is also handy. Any size, I would say half inch or less. You can get by without it, but if you can add a aquarium air pump to the picture, you'll get the best results. The vinegar, water and salt solution is added to my container and I have now also secured these two zinc anodes on opposite ends, making sure that they are submerged in the liquid. Now before we can do any plating, we need to actually get some zinc ions into the solution and yes, how are we going to do that? Cut the plug off the phone charger, strip back the insulation and you'll see there's a red wire and a black wire. Red of course is positive and black is negative. Connect the negative to one anode and the positive to the other anode. And switch on the power supply. And when you see bubbles happening here on the negative anode, you know you are on the right track. We are now busy putting zinc ions into the solution. We are busy creating a plating solution and this is a very important first step before we can actually do any plating. So I'm going to leave it like this for about three hours by which time our solution should be ready for the next step. Right, it's about three hours later. I'm going to switch off my power supply and you'll see it stops fizzing and bubbling. <laughs> Now there's no visual change to the solution, but it should be fully ionized by now and uh, we're going to find out soon if it will work. I quickly removed that negative zinc anode so that we can just have a closer look at it. So here's a new unused one and uh, if you look at this one you can see how the color has changed and uh, you can see how it's eroded. That indicates that some of the zinc has now moved into that solution. 
Now before we can start plating, we have to change the electrical connections. And as you can see here, I have now connected my positive supply to both of the zinc anodes. And the negative supply is going to connect to this length of copper tubing that I've got resting on the edges across like this. I will suspend my parts from this tubing into the solution. I flattened the end of the tube, drilled the hole and used the ring lock for a nice secure connection. I did it on both sides, length of wire, my negative supply coming in like that. I guess, I guess that's just OCD, probably not necessary. We are ready for action, let's go find a part that we want to plate. Let's do this rusty bolt as a test. Now you can't stick it in just like that, it needs to be perfectly clean and all the rust must be removed. Like so, wire brush in a drill, sand blast, grit blast, media blast, whatever it takes, but you need to have it nice and shiny and clean like this. If there's any rust spot on it, the plating won't stick to it. I've tied my clean part to a piece of copper wire. I'm going to suspend it in the pool asset. Leave it hanging here until it stops making bubbles. Rinse it in the fresh water. And hang it in the plating solution. So nothing is currently happening because I haven't switched on the power supply yet. So let's do that. Aha! Can you see something starting to happen here? Congratulations Duffy! You are busy plating this bolt. I'm going to leave this hanging in here for about 5 minutes or so and then we check back on it. Alright, let's take it out see what we got. Aha, uh -huh, can you see that grey dull colour? That's zinc plating. And look at that, good example this one. Can you see how I did not plate in certain areas? Now that is most of the time due to improper cleaning. But I've also found that if I um, put the air pump in here and agitate the water, you get better plating. We can also try leaving it in a solution for a longer period of time. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, let's take this out. We add the bubbler and we try again. So I've got my air pump rigged up now. It is right there. And then I've got pipes going to the two air stones that you get with the pump. So if we switch this on, there we go. Now we get bubbles all over the place. We can adjust how many bubbles we want with this. On the back of this thing there you can adjust the flow of your air. Yeah, so it's a good thing this happened, so that we can troubleshoot together what went wrong and why it didn't plate in certain areas. Let's try it again with the bubbler going and leave it for another five minutes or so. I still got my power supply switched on, so this is connected to negative, that's important. Five minutes later, let's have another look. Ah yes, can you see? Now we've got a uniform grey colour. So the bubbler has made all the difference. And that's why I've said in earlier that it'll actually make for much better results. That looks good. Let's talk a little about the current requirement for zinc plating. There's actually an exact science behind it. Where the surface area of the parts you are plating determines the current requirement. It's about 0.1 amps per square inch or then 1 amp for 10 square inches. This means you would need to calculate the surface area of the parts you want to plate. It's not an exactly an easy thing to do. For instance, a, the surface area of a bolt is quite tricky. Online calculators are available but I'm not taking this business that serious and I just use that number 
for a rough idea. I'm just playing it by ear, or rather by eye. <laughs> Occasionally, inspecting my parts during the plating process, there's no issue to take it out and have a quick look at it and sticking it back in. Keeping in mind that I have a fixed current supply of 2 amps, I have been experimenting with plating time and depending on the number and the size of the parts that I do in one go, it seems that around 20 minutes is the longest period I use. It is my understanding that lower current per square inch will result in finer crystals, but obviously plating time will be longer. And higher current will obviously plate faster, but it can apparently cause rough deposits and even burning. If you don't have an adjustable power supply like me, a little experimenting is the order of the day. If it doesn't work too well, you can just clean up the part and try it in a different manner. So let's compare my freshly plated bolt to an unplated one to see the difference. So I'm just going to take it out, give it a quick rinse in my fresh water here, and let's go look at it closer. So here it is next to a freshly wire brushed unplated bolt, and you can see a significant difference. It's got a dull grey coating. That is zinc plating. We have had success. <laughs> now leave that one to dry. Let's go try a couple more. Dip them in the hydrochloric acid until there are no bubbles. Rinse in my fresh water. And into the plating solution you go. And you. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, we are plating. 15 minutes in the plating solution. And we've got some good zinc plating going here. Here in the back is an unplated wire brush bolt for reference. Once the water is dried off, you probably won't be very impressed with the dull grey finish that you have. Now that is because uh, in commercial zinc plating, they use all sorts of brightener chemicals with names that you can't pronounce to get a brighter finish. Now apparently if you add some light corn syrup to your plating solution it will act as a brightener. I don't know because I can't find that nasty shit anywhere here. It's not readily available. Although corn syrup is already in all the processed foods which I don't eat. No takeaways, fast foods or processed scrap full of chemicals for me. I only eat real natural foods that we prep ourselves. I digress. If you can find some corn syrup, give it a try. Maybe it works for you. If you want your pot to have a shiny look, you can buff it up with a bit of metal polish and a little elbow grease. Now, before the hysterical safety inspectors jump on my case again, we are working with acids and nasty fumes here. Your responsibility to make a call on wearing a respirator, gloves, a relevant PPE, not mine. My pores are like leather. About the same as the feet of a bushman who's been running barefoot across the sand dunes for a lifetime. And my 64 year old lungs must be lined with a substance unknown to man. From decades of inhaling all sorts of dubious matter, some purposefully <laughs> and some not. So your call, your responsibility, not anyone else's, let common sense prevail. Well then. I've got lots of plated parts, an assembly of the freshly painted bits and pieces on the Hudson frame will be next. I can't wait. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you Oaks next week. Until then, as always, have a lacquer one. Whatever makes you happy, it just depends.